try it out in the model and see what happens. The economic theory has, most, most people who aren't economists believe economists are experts on money. And what they don't realise is again one of these little historical accidents. Mainstream economics began fundamentally with Walras' model back in the 1870s where he was trying to model uh, individual mark market trade reaching equilibrium without any external control. And his vision of that was the Paris Bourse where there were individual commodities which were traded with an auctioneer who would make sure demand equal supply before trades took place in that individual market. And so he scaled it to say, could you have a room where all markets did that at once so no trade occurred in any market until all markets were in equilibrium? Could we get to that point? And mathematically, of course, they can't, but that doesn't stop economists from using that as their foundation. But as some of you simplifying assumptions, you assume no money, no banks and no debt. Now that got ossified into economic theory and at the same time, uh, they wanted to say nominal factors in money, inflation, prices, absolute prices, only affect uh, uh, the, the price ratios, the price level. They don't affect actual economy. So they wanted to have the monetary system having no impact upon the real. And that became what they call money neutrality. So all this stuff becomes embedded in mainstream education. And if you survive in education or an inculcation in mainstream economics, you think that money makes no difference. Well, in the real world, what banks do is create money. And if they create money, they don't create it so it sits in a bank vault and you can pay interest back to the, to the bank. They create them so you can spend it. So that creation of money by banks creates spending power. It has a definite impact upon the economy. And that completely changes the nature of macroeconomics once you recognise that. Schumpeter recognised it back in the 1920s. Irving Fisher realised it in the 1930s. Pigou realised it in the late 1920s, so it was something that was sitting there. But the mainstream wants to keep the models nice and neat and tidy, and money makes it all very messy from their point of view. They continue assuming it doesn't matter. I'm saying if, you do, if you're modelling an economy that doesn't have money, you're not modelling capitalism. So we need a framework that lets us do that, and Minsky is specifically designed to do that. So what I, my, my original work in economics was on Marx's theory of value, deriving it from his dialectical philosophy. And part of that dialectical philosophy always has a foreground and a background. So if you, um, that gives me a foundation that lets me integrate the two. So uh, if you, the vision I have of that is that every, it misses Hegel and, and, and Marx's together, is the argument that any unity is embedded in a society. Society will focus upon one aspect of that unity, making it the foreground but the unity can't exist without the rest of its elements which are pushed into the background and therefore you sort of stretch the unity and there's a tension between the foreground and the background. And that gives you a basis to say there'll be transformation over time. But it also means I could talk about moral philosophy at one extreme and self-interest at the other. Now when you see that there's a unity there, you've got to have a tension between the two and you can't get rid of one and just focus on the other. But there's this tendency in humanity to do that. And if you look at our religious theories, that ends up with the same extreme, one extreme or the other. The only religions that don't do that are things like Buddhism, which talk about yin and yang, and you know, you've got to think the balance right between one extreme and another. We always, as a species, seem to fall for an extreme. So we need a philosophy that makes us, lets us avoid that. And Smith didn't, even though he provided both moral philosophy on one hand and self-interest on the other, he didn't provide a philosophy that integrated the two, so economics ran off on one extreme.